Warning that this video contains sexually suggestive and derogatory language, as well as topics of violence. I would not recommend it for an audience below 16. Thank you. The appeal to tradition is a form of informal fallacy, in which an argument is made that because something is traditional, it must be good. This line of thought is most often heard among social conservatives, with ideas ranging from women being homemakers, the value of religion, the nuclear family, or a plethora of other socially constructed ideas with no real merit beyond the fact that throughout Western history, these things were the norm. While some conservatives may have supplemental arguments beyond tradition for these things, their fundamental value is that of tradition. This is how it was in the past, so this is how it should stay. You can already tell from the title, however, that this video is not discussing conservatives, so let's just get into it. When talking about LGBT discourse, appeals to tradition are inevitable, whether you're talking to an inclusionist or an exclusionist. The phrase learn queer history is thrown around in almost every argument no matter what you're discussing or what side you're on. While knowing the history of your community is obviously valuable, this phrase is rarely given in response to someone saying something historically inaccurate or due to genuine ignorance of queer history, but rather when someone holds a belief within LGBT spaces that contradicts your own, using queer elders as somewhat of a gotcha card. The post that sparked this video, although I've seen many like it before, used a book from 1998 titled My Gender Workbook by Kate Bornstein as an example of why contradictory labels are harmless, why trans men can be lesbians, and a plethora of other positions similar to it. The book is a list of queer people during the 90s describing their own gender identity with phrases ranging from attorney at law, FTM rebel rouser, gentlemanly pain in the ass, trans man daddy top, which is provocative but ultimately amusing to me personally, or FTM transgendered bull dagger gentleman stone butch d slur with fag tendencies, or as my girlfriend says, a drag queen trapped in a man trapped in a woman's body, which in my opinion is honestly less amusing but I'll leave it at that. Ultimately, how I feel about this particular book is not the point of the video, but more so that its mere existence being written 36 years ago was supposedly an argument. The sole argument for the fact that contradictory labels are good and harmless. If you think any LGBT person can say any LGBT-related slur, if you love contradictory labels, or if you support other things in that vein, I cannot in good conscience say I agree with you. However, you should think about why you believe those things for yourself instead of invoking the idea that anyone who disagrees with you is unaware of their history. The idea that something was historically acceptable not only ignores whether or not that thing was actually good, but also ignores the historical context for its usage. I personally have a bit of mixed feelings in the area of respectability politics in both transmed spaces and greater LGBT spaces. While I personally make no active effort to appeal to respectability politics in my daily life, though some would argue, argue I do simply by being a transmed, go see my video on why I'm a transmed if you're interested in this, this is already an aside. I do believe that they have a place surrounding people who may be misinformed or when seeking more personal and immediate safety and acceptance from those around you. I've heard personal stories from people I know in real life about how establishing that trans people are just normal people has turned someone previously vitriolic towards us into an ally. But contrary to that, I don't think that anyone should have to tone down who they are or be quiet about their beliefs to appease someone else. And if I were to say that, I would be a downright hypocrite considering I regularly make people I know uncomfortable by refusing to censor myself. However, this argument is also used by exclusionists, and I don't think that that's any more productive. Arguments that transmedicalism used to be the norm, that transsexual and transgender used to mean different things, or even that people like Buck Angel or trans elders are often used by the side I agree with while invoking the same queer history and queer elders idea that has no real argument for why transmedicalism being normalized or why different, more specific types of transness are actually a good thing. I think another issue with this, aside from being a fallacy, is that just like now, LGBT people in the 80s and 90s were individuals, not a monolith. There were people who identified as fag dieseler in the 80s, and people who assimilated and moved on after transition to be stealth. There have always been disagreements, and that makes it woefully easy for any person to claim to have a historical basis for their side being the correct one, while neglecting to actually start from the beginning and establish why their beliefs are the correct ones, and then later backing it up with history. Ultimately, I think the phrase learn queer history is thrown around so liberally because elders are not a monolith. It's extremely easy to appeal to tradition and point towards people who already agree with you. With violence committed against LGBT people, especially around the 80s and 90s, it can also be quite easy to manipulate people into feeling guilty over supposedly ignoring the voices of those who lived through it, instead of actually making a case for your beliefs from the start and then later invoking those experiences and how they may have harmed or benefited people. The main point of this video is that no one should be using this fallacy, and it's the same mindset conservatives use to argue against our very existence. If you truly care about what you're saying, learn to articulate why, and if you can't come up with any good reasons for your beliefs, then change them. 
Thank you for watching, guys. Hade. Talking to the air